Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Maui Jim Sunglasses. First Tellurium Corp, the future of mining. And Hardy Rods and Reels. Good day, folks, and welcome to another segment on the bench. Today I'm bringing you a, a little shrimp pattern here, kind of a molten, molting shrimp, uh, almost, almost clear pattern. Uh, this is a really nice fly to fish on the marl uh, for shrimp. Uh, you notice it's not on a typical curved scud hook. I'm fishing this pattern so it's elongated. When shrimp are traveling, they, they're stretched out. They're not all curled up. Usually when they're in that uh, curling position like that is when they're on your waders or latched onto a, a weed or something like that. But when they're when they're moving, they're... They're elongated, so these these type of hooks are uh, more applicable to that uh, stage stage of the food source. Uh, let's go over the materials we need to tie the fly. I'm going to be using a Daiichi 1760 size 12. This is a 2x long curve shank. It's got a bit of a hump in the back. It's not totally flat. You can use a straight shank if you don't have those. I'm going to be using some light olive thread here. This is an 8 aught. The um, ribbing, I'm going to be using some Semperfly bright silver wire. This is uh, 0.1 millimeter. It's a fine wire. On the shell back, we used, usually use uh, saw scud. This is light olive. I could put that on this pattern if I like. Uh, I want the more clear, and I don't have the clear saw scud back, so what I've done is just taken one of my baggies and Cut a strip down and I'll use that for my back. And that's actually what it was used originally. The This pattern here was a pattern that uh, John Dorman tied in Medicine Hat. He was a fellow that was instrumental, helped me a lot when I was starting tying. And I appreciated uh, all of John's advice. And he's a good tire. And really nice to have those kind of guys around to help you get going. Uh, the body material, I'm going to be using some Legus. Uh, ultra translucent dubbing material. Typically, I'd be using a sparkle olive scud. I like that. It's a nice color. Uh, it works in a lot of water bodies. You can change the colors to match. But when I want more of the molting shrimp, I need it a little lighter, almost white. So what I've done is I've taken 50-50 uh, blend of that dubbing and uh, I've thrown it in my little coffee bean grinder. And I've come up with this blend right here. It's toned it down a lot. It's not quite white. It's not olive. I like this molting color. Just get yourself a little cheap little coffee bean grinder somewhere. They're something I really recommend to have on your vice, on your bench. And then for the tail, I'm just going to use some little spade hackles here off the bottom of one of these saddles. Just kind of a light colored uh, grizzly hackle and for the eyes John used these little extra small monofilament eyes and it works good so let's get a hook in the vise and tie this one up I'm going to replenish my fly box for so these these are good good flies from the morals on Fisher Lake that's really good with for that and you'll I'm sure you have lots of Situations wherever you fish, you're, you can use these flies. And okay, so we we'll got the thread on the shank there, as you can see. Then I'll come in with some of my hackle, pinch off, get a nice even tips on there, tie it fairly short around the corner. I'll just wrap them butts right down. See the shank of the hook has got a bit of a curvature to it. Just a slight curve. I like that. That's a good hook for a lot of nymphs. Then I'll bring in uh, my plastic baggie. And use what you have. That's one thing about fly tying. You can always substitute you don't have the stretch back. Go grab some baggy material off a bread bag or whatever else. 
That's what we used to use years ago before we had stretch back, I think. <laughs> Whatever it was. Yeah, so there. Got that all done. Now I'm going to come in here with the eyes. I'm going to tie that in right over the point of the hook right there. Fix them on. If you don't have the monofilament eyes, you can also tie a little piece of monofilament on there and then burn them with a lighter and then you can make your own eyes. They look pretty good too. They work actually really good. If you don't like the color of them, put a little different, uh, little, little bit of a coloration on there with a felt pen marker. Okay, now we'll bring in our blend of our ligus. It's kind of a molten shrimp. Molt, molten shrimp, not molten, molten. That's when they're moving around. You got lots of dubbing on here. I'm going to build this back in here thicker. Dubbing doesn't have to be super tight. I'm going to pick it out. I'm going to just getting pretty thin right there. Let me tighten that up a little bit. And then I'll taper this forward. Clean that up a little bit. This ligus is really nice dubbing. I just like the translucency of it. It looks great in the water. A lot of times we look at these different flies on the on the bench here and on the vise. They look pretty good, but get them in the water. It's really important to check out the characteristics of your materials when they're wet. Do they look like what you're trying to imitate? And some all all these materials. So when you're following recipes for any flies from different people whatever if it is asking for a specific type of dubbing or whatever there's there's a reason for it it's been selected to a texture or whatever it may be translucency or for one example or bugginess or whatever there we go put a little whip finish on the front there simplify to tie I'm just going to get a bodkin needle in underneath there to pluck this out a little bit. Not too much. Don't overdo it. Get a little bit at the front. We basically want to have this kind of a tapered legs. Front to back. I'll get it pulled out pretty good. I don't want it to take over the body too much. Then I'll come in at an angle from basically my the eye of the hook down to the point. That'll be good. That'll represent some legs. Got the nice little shell back in there. Put some head cement on. And uh, there's a great little pattern. You can fish this with a clear intermediate line as well. I like to fish it with probably four inch poles, six inch poles. Um, if you're able to, to sight fish where you can stand up in a boat and watch what you're doing, these fish will really come after this one. And uh, you can strip it fairly fast some days. Some days you want to be a little slower, the fish will tell you what they want. So clear intermediate line and uh, I don't fish it weighted. It, it'll stay in the zone a lot longer. Uh, shallow water situations where we're fishing probably you know, five, six feet or, or less sometimes. And uh, the fish are in there and they'll, they'll be looking for these shrimp. And uh, even in darker water bodies, uh, then you want to go use that little darker uh, dubbing that I showed you to match the natural. So. We'd like to thank you again for watching. We'll catch you again real soon.